Okay guys, so hopefully you watched my Infinite Disc Mystery Box unboxing video. And now I'm out at the beautiful course at Etowah, and we are gonna see how they fly. Uh, last year, I think I shot five down with the Mystery Box. I'm gonna shoot for, see if we can do better than that. The challenge will be there's no distance drivers in here, but that's not really required out here too much. Just two long holes really. So let's give them some flings, see how we do. Okay, so for a hole one here, I'm throwing the Paradox. Got it a little bit too turned over, but I actually kicked back into the fairway, so not too bad of a spot. I'll have an easy pitch up with the P model US and be able to tap in for relatively drama free part to start off. A little wobbly on that putt there, but we're in. Hole two going putter straight away, and it clips this branch here and ends up just a little bit short, but easy pitch up and another par to start. Going vengeance off the tee on number three here. It's 575, flipped it just a little bit, and throwing from just off camera there, went vengeance again with that turnover forehand, and it stands up inside circle two. So uh, not too bad of a throw there. It gives me a, a little bit of a look, and easy pitch up and par once again with the P model US. Overall, um, Missed having something quicker than the Vengeance on this hole, but definitely not a, a deal breaker at all. And starting to jive with that P model US a little bit. So four is the famous cave hole, and I'm just gonna go Vengeance straight at it. It's the only one that I felt like I could get there forehand pretty well, and I prefer the forehand line. Stick it on the hill to the left, and have about a 30, 35 foot putt. Went with the ruin so it would hyzer better and was able to convert that one for my first birdie. So that felt pretty good overall. Number five is one of the trickier holes. I went pika pika here and it clips that inside tree and ends up high on the right side. Not exactly ideal. So I go force turnover with the Banshee, which actually hit right by the pin, but it rolled away. So I had to do this pitch up or almost whacked the camera and then uh, took a bogey on that one. So back to even. Number six went with the Vengeance again. It hit that line really, really nicely. Uh, Would have liked something that skipped a little more and get a bit closer, but still almost converted for the birdie. But the band got me. Vengeance one more time. Big Sky Heiser line. Uh, should put a little bit more on it, but still end up with a playable shot and pitch up and drop in par here on number seven. On eight, I'm going with the Banshee because I didn't have like a straight to fade mid range and end up going right by the hole, uh, right across the front of the chains, ends up a little bit short and left as it skids down the hill. But that'll give me a, a fairly easy uphill 25 footer that I was able to convert and get back under par for the round. Starting to kind of jive with the P-Model US at this point, I was kind of doubtful that it would perform the same way as my Swan does, but I actually ended up really liking the way it throws. It's not that different, and uh, on this hole, decided to throw it off the tee. I actually ended up pretty close, but it hits the hill, and I've got like a 25 foot look well uphill, kind of just a little bit obscured there. Not the ideal situation, but still definitely convert if I didn't hit the cage. Need a little bit more juice than I gave it there. So on this hole, I'm going to try to go Banshee off the tee. I usually throw a T-bird here, and this one's light enough to where I was able to hit the same line pretty well. And I have a look at a putt right here. It ends up being about a 30 footer that would be pretty easy to convert if I didn't have that tree right in my face. Give it a little bit of hyzer and just couldn't quite get it to stick. On number 11, I'm gonna try out the Helios because I couldn't think of another spot where I might throw it. Just go thumb right down there. It hits a tree close that prevented it from going right by the basket but still left me with a decent putt just outside of the circle. 
and I'll give that a run here. Sorry for the wonky camera angle. But just a little bit soft. I was scared to go long enough to uh, right there. On 12, I like to take this big hyzer route out over the creek. It's out of bounds, but it worked out pretty well. I gave a lot of hyzer to the Pika Pika, and it ended up giving me a pretty good look. Really enjoying the Pika Pika. It's a good line holding fairway driver. And you see my putt there is uphill, but still able to convert pretty easily and go two under par at this point. On this one, you got some OB short, and I'm just going ruin. Get out of the way, dummy. And I uh, hit a tree, but it stays within the circle, and I'll be able to pitch in and go three under par. On 14, you have another creek OB, same creek going the other direction. Going vengeance here. Turned it over a little bit too much, but still got in a good position just outside the circle and was able to convert this one to go four down. On 15, going back to the Pika Pika, trying to go inside that telephone pole and get it to fade back. It never really faded back, but luckily the right side of the road is inbound. So just had a pretty easy pitch up here. Kind of gave it a half run and hit the, the block at the base of the elevated basket, but easy par. On 16, going Banshee. Usually throw a mid here, but going with the fairway driver. And it sticks right by the cage, dropping birdie, so I'm five down at this point. On 17, it went back to the Pika Pika. I thought that the added glide would be nice for a little bit wider shot on this hole. And it glides straight through there. I was a little afraid it was going to go long, but it faded hard late, skips up, and gave me about a five-foot putt. So pretty easy there. Going vengeance again here. Uh, didn't feel like I could throw it too hard, but gave it just enough to get down there, about 350 on the right side. It didn't go up the hill, so I was able to drop in for pretty easy birdie. And then I'm going paradox here on 19. Unluckily, it cuts out halfway through. So my battery died right there on 19. The Paradox flipped up, rode that line all the way about 20 short of the basket, and I was able to get a birdie there to get me seven down. And then on 20, I uh, put the Vengeance just over the road OB. It was in the long position, and then, you know, pitched up and tapped in for another par, and ended up having a really, really good round with all the discs. I enjoyed the Vengeance a lot. If you like a disc that's like a PD or not quite as overstable, something like a Flare or a Firebird, it's a really nice feel. And I think it probably would be a little bit back, better backhand than a lot of the really, really overstable uh, fairway and control drivers. Also really enjoyed the Pika Pika. Seemed to get a good throw out of it on every hole except for number five where it was a little bit quick for that scenario. And the Ruin and P-Mile US were both great. Uh, I think the Paradox is also very good for what it is. I don't really throw under stable mid-ranges, but that one ended up doing pretty well on the couple holes I used it for. The only one I'm really not so sure about is the Helios, uh, super flippy beginner fairway in a lightweight. It's not something I'll ever really have much use for, so hopefully be able to get that into the hands of a newer player with lower arm speed that's going to enjoy it a lot. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you really enjoyed my first take at trying to do a voiceover on a video in a long, long time, and uh, give these guys a shot. Have a great day.